presumably you've been up for the last three hours <laughs> watching the debate in order to give us your detailed first-hand reaction. Who won, Kamala Harris or Donald Trump? I think Tricia Goddard has a more in-depth analysis of the yes, debate. Yes, do, do I get the sense you are not particularly invested in no, what's happening. Invested. It's hugely consequential sure. yeah. who wins. Well, it, it could, swing, it could uh, swing the outcome. But if I'm working until midnight tonight, I, could, yeah. I couldn't stay up last timing. night as well. So I mean, just, that is I've, the problem. I've just watched the clips, and yeah. what I think is odd is that there's not been a snap poll, which we always get here yeah. in our debate. No snap poll. The but betting the one markets thing I, say yeah. that is won by Harris. Yeah. The betting markets shifted in her favour. Okay. It's the second but, most but, watched but, event but, in but, but, US TV after the Super Bowl. So it's the Super Bowl of politics. Him saying that he watched on TV migrants eating pets. Tricia, you watched for us. Yeah. It, it, I think just the impression I'm getting here, uh, it didn't seem to have huge, explosive standout moments. What it did have was moments yeah. of weirdness. <laughs> Yes, yes, the whole thing about Springfield, Ohio, uh, when Donald Trump repeated that uh, migrants, the, you know, had been eating cats and dogs and what have you, uh, the brilliant, one of the brilliant uh, moderators, Lindsay, Dave, uh, Lindsay Davis and David Muir, David Muir pointed out that they contacted that town and nothing had happened. What it was is uh, somebody had posted on Facebook that a daughter of someone they knew claimed they'd seen this. That's mm. the only claim. And J.D. Vance himself actually backpedaled and said, well, yes, it, it probably was made up. But obviously that message didn't get through to J.D. Vance. Another thing was when it came up about abortion and the question asked to, to both Harris and uh, Trump, would um, they give a blanket, uh, you know, uh, abortion ban? They wanted to know if Trump would give a blanket abortion ban. And then they quoted um, J.D. Vance, who was clearly at odds on all of this, and Trump said oh well we didn't we haven't spoken about it so there were there were many weird moments but i have to say it was like watching law and order kamala harris played a blind in fact the democrats were really strategic on this right from the beginning you know they had no open mics between hand and all of these different rules no audience and what have you well initially the democrats said no we want the mics to be open all the time because they knew donald trump would get himself into trouble donald trump's team said no because they, they're trying to rein him in and make him stick to script. They said, no, we want the mic shut down between, you know, when people speak. Apparently, Donald Trump was absolutely furious about it. And, and incidentally, my colleagues at CNN tell me that when he brought up the cats and dogs, all the Republicans in the spin room went, oh. <laughs> Trisha, <laughs> so... if for anyone who didn't see that, let's just remind so them uh, of the moment when Donald Trump repeated this spurious, unsubstantiated rumour about Haitian migrants in Ohio. They always say in politics, <laughs> if you really want to understand the dynamics of a political event, you should turn down the sound mm. and just look at the screen. Ah. And if you turn the sound down there, what do you see? You see Donald Trump says something, Kamala Harris kind of laughs like, you are totally yes. crackers. And then he ends up in a row with the moderator, where the moderator is speaking, he's trying to shut him. And the, the overall visual effect, even though the mics mm. are off, as Trisha Goddard said, is good for Harris. Yeah, Trisha, who uh, wins the election based on the outcome of this debate? You, you can't... I mean, the, the real fight, and this was held in the Philadelphia Constitution Centre because Pennsylvania is one of those swing states. You can't judge... And Kamala Harris, after the debate, talking to um, her, her workers, actually, and I saw that as well, I've been up all night watching this stuff, um, said, look, we, we can't rest on our laurels. Um, no presidential... I mean, you know, you, you can't say... You can talk about who won and who lost the debate, and I think for the Republicans, it came as close to a moment of when the Democrats uh, had to watch Joe Biden in that last debate. Trump looked old and tired, and Kamala sort of um, uh, sort of yeah. said, you know, this is the new moving forward, it's a new generation, yeah. it's a new movement. Yeah. Of course, brought up things like abortion, et cetera, et cetera. So, but you can't bank the outcome. There's 56 days 
to the election. It's about getting people motivated. And people didn't know who Kamala Harris was. They saw much more of a glimpse of who she was here. She talked about her middle-class upbringing, the fact that she wasn't handed millions on a plate and bankrupted six times, the fact that she was a prosecutor. Um, and so she, she gave us a glimpse on who she was. She actually mentioned some policies, like giving $50,000 to new startups, for instance, 6000 to new families so they can buy, uh, you know, baby carriages, as they call them over here, and car seats uh, and things like that, talked about the Obamacare, affordable care and what have you. And she kept leading Donald Trump into these traps. And I've got to say, I was sitting there watching it, and it was like watching Law and Order going, no, 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 no. And sure enough, Donald Trump walked into it. There wouldn't have been any war if it had been for me because I'm very good friends with Putin. I'm very good friends with Xi. I'm very good, you know, and, and he talked about Oban, you know, of Hungary, the um, right-wing um, PM of Hungary, really admiring him. And, of course, Kamala Harris said, well, you know, I'm not going to be swayed by basically people blowing smoke up my backside <laughs> and it takes a dictator to know one. Ooh, and he wow. just kept walking into those traps. It was okay. brilliant. Tricia, we are so grateful. Thank you. Thank you for that. very much. Uh, great to get your analysis. Our US commentator, Tricia Goddard, thank you so much. Um, Kamala Harris did get the endorsement of yeah, Taylor right. Swift. Mm. I'll be casting my vote, she said, to her... Let me just uh, have a look how many followers she had at the last... 283 million mm. followers. She said, I'll be casting my vote uh, for Kamala Harris in the 2024 presidential election. She fights for the rights and causes, I believe, need a warrior to champion Most them. Most celebrity endorsements uh, aren't worth very much at That's all. What I think. But Taylor Swift... She's a phenomenon. It is. If every one of those followers voted... Yeah. Which they yeah. won't, but she'll motivate well, a base. Even, she, if she'll ten, motivate, even if they're tenth of them. Yeah, she'll motivate That's a, lot. a lot of young yeah. women to vote who probably demographically didn't vote in a, at a high rate in the past. Possibly mm. their, their mums and their dads mm. as well. I mean, that... You know, she is the endorsement you want. You'd and, rather have her than not. clever timing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, uh, I think... I, think uh, I would guess if the debate had not gone so well, they would have said um, to Taylor Swift, could you do it another day? Yeah. yeah. But if they feel as though they've come out of it well, Harris says, bring on another debate. Yeah. Taylor Swift then goes out and says, we want a warrior. This is kind of like good politics. You know, it, it, it's the weirdness of Trump. That's... The, which was... You know, Kamala Harris says, running mate came up with it. Uh, he's weird. The people around him are weird. Cats and dogs plays straight into that. If that's what people take away, mm. uh, he's mm. going around with this falsehood, oh, I've, I've read it, I've seen it on TV, when it's just utterly baseless. It's got a boomerang on him. Meanwhile, front of your paper, yes. let's get the matters back home. Daily Mail, after just 68 days, Starmageddon. Prisoners soaked with celebratory bubbly as thieves, drug dealers and violent criminals are freed early. One vows he's now a lifelong <laughs> Labour voter on the day Starmer's MPs vote to axe winter fuel cash. The, the timing of this is extraordinary. Isn't it? So, winter fuel, the biggest Labour revolt in decades. 53 MPs refuse to support taking away winter fuel mm. from a lot of very poor pensions, and then some really unsavoury characters, really unpleasant, released early from prison, and celebrating it and cocking a snook, doing this to everybody. One of them, I read, um, has been released early. He shook a six-month-old baby so hard, the baby is paralysed and now blind. Mm. There are domestic uh, uh, sex offenders who've been released. I thought we were being told that wasn't going to happen. But you're not I... saying that it's... Keir Starmer's no, fault. No, these prisons are being the prisons are filled to, to, to the brim. Right. But I would not have. They, the ones who have been released, mm. uh, they should have gone through this much more carefully. And I just think the timing of it, Ed, on the day when we've got this difficult vote, and the Prime Minister mm. is speaking to the TUC, the first Labour Prime Minister to speak to the TUC conference since 2009, and it was almost. The reception was lukewarm. Yeah, with, yeah the with... reason that you two weren't here yesterday we were morning was because you went to yeah. the Trades Union Congress... We did. ...because it's the first time, yeah. presumably, Since a Prime Minister yeah. has addressed... Yeah. Since Gordon Brown. Since Gordon Brown. Brown. Exactly. Yeah. Because but, uh, Conservative Prime Ministers yeah. don't go. So, so, so why... And, and yet he had, uh, they allow all these 
dreadful people out of prison on that day. Winter, winter fuel is an own goal. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a black hole. Yes, the public finances are, uh, are very poor, be left in a dire state, but it was a, it was a wrong choice to try and fill it on the backs of pensioners. But prisoner release, the Conservative government packed the jails. It's a straight inherited problem. They were releasing people early in exactly the same way. They were, now, they brought it down to 40%, which Alex Chalk, who was the Conservative Justice Secretary... What you mean is prisoners well. were being released once they uh, served 40% of their uh, yeah, which sentence I, I, in prison, I think... as opposed... Yeah, fifty percent. Exactly. I think is... it's I think it's wrong. <clears throat> Standard. But you've got a problem. What else do you do? If mm. you don't free those places, you can't have people in court and you can't convict them because you don't have anywhere to put them if they are sentenced to jail. It's a it's a problem Labour's yeah. inherited. I agree the timing looks bad, but whatever day those prisoners, the seventeen hundred, were going to be released was always going to be a bad day. But it's a yeah. Tory. It's a Tory mess that but, Labour is trying to cl but hang on, clean up. So you are right about the diagnosis. We had these discussions, you remember, before the election with the policing minister, Chris Philp, who was in police uh, correspondence with the police yeah. about whether they were going to have to say to the police, stop um, arresting people and charging yeah. them because there isn't space yeah, in the yep. jails. It clearly was a, a huge problem. But how do you end up, as Susanna says, releasing them all on the same day oh. um, in front of the cameras... Yeah. while the promises of the TUC, you feel as though kind of yeah. like politics 101. Yeah, but you don't yeah. invite the cameras, they're there, uh, yeah, cos they'll go to prisons. We know in the media, we, so know, all, it's, we know it's happening. It was all widely trailed in advance. Prisons are released every day. Yeah, but, yeah, but, every, exactly. but every day there will be people with champagne and big cars <laughs> and loved <laughs> ones there with banners saying, welcome <laughs> home, they, you but, come... But, so why not, make yesterday well, prisoner release day? The Justice yeah. Secretary announced, they want, announced they it as if this was good news. It's horrible. It will make people sick to the bottom of their stomach. I've personally never understood why you're released after half your sentence, unless it is for specific good behaviour and showing you've rehabilitated yourself. And, yeah. and you're released under licence. You're released under licence yeah. with a whole series of conditions, yep. which if you break, yeah. you go back well, in. Well, they'll, they'll be there. It's a way of managing the and prison just, population and, and trying and they've to not done people... It, and they've not is, done the due diligence, but, because we've seen many victims of domestic violence appalled to learn in the last 24 hours that the perpetrator of that violence has been released. The, vic the victims... That's not acceptable. The victims and the family of the victims of every one of those 1,700 are entitled and just justified in being really aggrieved and angry about it. The government <laughs> insisted <clears throat> that offenders who'd been jailed for violent offences uh, with sentences of at least four years were not eligible for early release. They said that sex offenders were not eligible for early release and they said that domestic abusers were not eligible for early release. Yeah, some, some of the people who are said to be sex offenders who've been released were in prison for something else, but they've yes. been convicted of uh, sex offences in the past. And the same with domestic abuse, yeah. and this is a huge problem. Mm. The thing that they, that they were doing, and that you need to do, is look not just at what people were convicted for, but whether in their past history yes. it was part of yeah. their behaviour there was a domestic violence thing. Mm. That's a much harder thing yeah. to do when you're doing it quickly, but... They shouldn't have done it so They quickly. say they had no choice but to do it quickly, because well, the they were it, absolutely full. Couldn't they have looked at it over a number of weeks? You, you could but you would have still ended up with the same result. I'm sure it could have been done better, but you, All right, if one you want day. the court system to be operating and people, if they're sentenced to prison, go to prison, you have to have a prison yeah. place to... Now, but, Andrew, who do you blame, though? Who's to blame for the prisons being full? Well, the Tories closed too many prisons, for sure, and, uh, and the, they started to deal with this before the last election. Um, they were... I, I understand part of the process was prisons that cells that were due to be refurbished, refurbishment was going to stop, so they would release more space. But I still don't think you should allow thousands out on the, the same day. On the same day. Totally that is that. a big mistake <laughs> by the this new... A, by the this, Conservatives no, are The blame big mistake this by is this new Labour government letting them all out on the same day. The Conservatives are to blame. Okay. Right, on this, yeah. they, that's, look, just be honest no. about it. They are it, to blame it is for that the new because Labour it was a government problem let them all that out. was inherited. Winter fuel is different. Mm. That is a Labour Kevin, cut. Mm. They your will lot, regret. Your lot have been in power for nine weeks. You know, that decision yesterday was taken by your you lot. You would have released them because it, you didn't build no, the places no, for the people no. you were putting also, in. We now, but we now, we now have them. Obviously, they're going to be supervised um, by probation well, good luck staff. With that. Probation service is under On its huge knees. strain as well. And Shabana Mahmood, who is the uh, Justice Secretary who is responsible, 
says probation staff working hard to prepare release plans, te permanent and temporary accommodation. If an offender is at risk of homelessness upon release, they'll be housed in community accommodation. Should there not be enough provision? I've authorised probation directors to make use of alternative arrangements, including budget hotels. Right, they can put next to the asylum seekers. Uh, that will be the probation service that the Conservatives uh, ran down privatised, mm. then had to well, reverse mm -hmm. the privatisation and thought left all, in an but she, should, she should have thought all this through. Uh, the trouble is, um, <laughs> it, it may well be, and of course, it's the previous government. Oh, you inherit fault, the problems. Yeah, you but inherit... it's the choices of yeah. this government yeah, yeah. that you inherit... they're going to be held, inherit... the Labour Party yep. will be held accountable you, you for. You inherit the problems, but I think you've got to explain to people <laughs> that some, some mistakes you make yourself mm. when you're in power, there's no, there's yeah. no doubt, but others, you have just inherited terrible mm. problems, and this well, is one of them. Yeah, but look, I mean, look, but, but I think Andrew is right to say the political handling of it... It's inept. But the fundamental problem yeah. was not caused by Keir yeah. Starmer, but it was caused by the previous... When people, see, the when people see those people cheering and celebrating, they're not going to think, hang on, they going to think, who's in government? Yeah. Labour. They are, A but, shiny new Labour but government. But that is why... These terrible that is why, as journalists, we should explain what is really happening. I yeah. have. Uh, right, let's talk about this vote on the winter fuel allowance. Only one Labour MP publicly voted against, and that is John Trickett, who is the MP for Normanton and Hemsworth. Mm. Um, he says, it shames our country that pensioner poverty has now written to eight, risen to 18%. On this particular vote, he said, the coming winter will be extremely difficult for my constituents of all ages. We know the consequences of poverty are devastating. It can be a matter of life and death for pensioners. Um, apparently, according to LBC's Lewis Goodall, several Labour MPs were in tears in the voting lobbies. Is it really? I mean, if you're if you're so upset well, they should about have voted this, against. why would you vote for yeah, it? They should have why voted against. They, why didn't they vote against it? Because they're thinking it? about their political career more. No, they're, th they're, they're thinking of how, yeah, they you, how you can be a more effective opposition. There's one Labour MP specifically voted against it. Several already suspected of the seven suspended Labour MPs also voted mm -hmm. against it. Of those 50... Was it 53? 52. 52. Not all of them would have been positive abstention. Some would be ministers away on official duties. But there was... Quite a lot of identical there was, appointments, there was, I think. There was a fair, a fair few of those abstaining. But a lot of the others were voting reluctantly uh, the measure... for it, and they will they will rue the day they, they did it, and they will curse the name yeah. of the chancellor and the prime minister. Because it will be on their voting record all the way up yeah. to the election. Forever. Yeah. Mm. The, the measure election. of the politics of this isn't yesterday's vote. Um, it's whether this is the end of it. I think if you are Rachel Reeves and Keir Starmer, you're hoping you know we've been tough, we faced it down, we threw the vote. Mm. They're hoping. You know, it recedes, it goes away, we all move on. Um, and that sometimes happens in politics mm. and sometimes it, it doesn't. Well, the well, question on this one, where are we going to be in three months' time? Well, the Nats I was at, the T at the TUC conference, they, there was the National Pensioners' Convention yeah. had a, a stand. They are going to campaign on this right up until Christmas. Every, They're yeah. going to have a day uh, of action at Parliament. And also, can I just say, sorry, it'll cast a long shadow. Because of hypothermia. This is, this is going to cause a problem, I, am, I, I predict... Uh, throughout the winter, particularly the Telegraph reports today, Rachel Reeves claimed £4,400 of taxpayer cash towards her own energy bills before axing the winter fuel payments for millions of pensioners. In the past five years alone, she has apparently, this according to the Telegraph newspaper, claimed £3,000. £700. The Chancellor and other Labour MPs spent more than 400 grand of taxpayers' money heating their own homes over the past five years, with some claiming thousands a year more than a typical household spends. Yeah, that'll be used against them. Now, look, what happens if you let, if you let an MP... Why wouldn't you yep. say, before we cut the winter fuel allowance mm. for people earning over mm. £11,400 a year... We're going to stop the allowance for our yeah. own second homes. What you what you do if you're an MP, you've got to live in your constituency. You live in London to work. You can stay in a hotel. There would be a heating element in that when you pay your hotel bill, which you can claim back. Or if you have a flat, you're allowed to rent. 
Uh, they have a fixed figure, so you can't go above it. So you decide a hotel or a flat. But how if much in the is flat, an MP's salary? You would have it. 91,000. 91,000. Right. No, no, it'll come so back. So somebody on 91,000... It'll, it'll come back every time, but I'm just trying to explain. It's allowed to you, allowed to, to use yeah. taxpayers' cash but, but to pay I, for their energy But if you let bill, somebody... But a pensioner on 11,500 can't but, claim a winter I'm fuel allowance. Look, I, I think this is absolutely wrong what's happened, but I'm explaining if you allow them to have accommodation when they come to work because mm. they're working away from home, you would presumably let them claim their water and their electricity for that. You just pay it that looks, element when they go to the It does. Terrible. But where, where, it's not going to be that that's going to come and haunt them. Every year, mm. there are what are called excess deaths from yeah. cold yeah. weather. And if you're old and you're vulnerable, mm. you're more likely to die. There's going to be shrouds waved from people saying, my, my mother, my father well, died from the cold and they didn't want to put the well, heating on. Because they might have even had the money, but they've lost this three hundred pound. Well, psychologically, well, very it will that, it will Kevin, play you know, it will play on their minds. In twenty seventeen, the Labour Party published research which showed banning taking away the winter fuel outs would result in the deaths of four thousand pensioners prematurely. Mm. Yeah, which your party changed? at the time said Has was scaremongering. Has that changed? Yeah, your party said was scaremongering. And Keir Starmer signed up to that research, yeah. and now he's in bringing in the. No, party. he didn't sign up to it. Yes, he did. No, he you are... Yes, he did. It was released by the Labour Party. Released, but he didn't sign he up. He was to in it. the shadow cabinet, he Kevin. Didn't sign okay. Up to okay. It. No, 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 we will discuss no, no. this yeah. further at the end of the programme. He did sign up to it. All of them did. Labour have got it wrong. We've got to leave them arguing.